Hello students, I am Shachi Tandon from Crack Chemistry. Today I am here with the class 12th topic. The name of the topic is Biomolecules Part 3. Part 1 and Part 2 of this chapter you can check in I button. Students, today we will discuss about cyclic structure of glucose, anomers, pyranose or Havers structure. Apart from that, I will tell you a trick with the help of which you can write these structures very easily, quickly and correctly. Children, before starting, I would like to remind you to subscribe my channel for getting information about further important uploads. Press the like button in case you like this video and share this video with your friends. So now let's see what we will study today. Children, today we will study about the cyclic structure of glucose anomers. Then we will study pyranose or have a structure and finally we will discuss trick to write these structures correctly and quickly also. So first of all we will start with cyclic structure of glucose. Children in my video biomolecules part 2 I have discussed about the structure of glucose. So the structure of glucose which we have discussed in a previous video that is structure explains most of its properties but the following reactions and facts could not be explained by this structure. So first I'll write the structure which I am talking about. So this is the structure of glucose. The first carbon atom consists of a, a present in the form of aldehyde group. Then second carbon atom is having H on the left hand side and OH on the right hand side. Then I am coming to the third carbon atom. Third carbon atom is having the just reverse arrangement of atoms. Then fourth and fifth carbon atoms, they have identical arrangement of atoms or groups of atoms on them. Then uh, this is the fifth carbon atom. And finally the sixth carbon atom is present in the form of CH2OH. So children, this is the structure of glucose. I'll mark here. This is the first carbon atom. This is the second carbon atom. This one is third. So we are not showing here the carbon atom. Uh, but so it, it indicates that carbon atom is present here. So this is the third carbon atom. Here this is the fourth carbon atom. This is the fifth carbon atom. And this is the six carbon atom. So this is structure I am writing as first. So this is structure explains most of the properties of glucose but some of the reactions and facts cannot be explained by these, this structure. So we will see what are the reactions and facts which cannot be explained by this structure. So first point is that uh, glucose has an aldehyde group. We have seen just now in the structure. The first carbon atom was present in the form of aldehyde group only. So in spite of having aldehyde group, glucose doesn't give Schipp's test. Children, this is a very important property of aldehydes that aldehydes react with Schipp's reagent and give a specific color, magenta color. And so that in spite of having aldehyde group, uh, glucose doesn't give Schipp's test. And second thing is that in spite of having aldehyde group, it doesn't form the hydrogen sulfide addition product with sodium bisulfite. Then one more reaction which is not shown by glucose but uh, the glucose was supposed to give this reaction, supposed to give this test. So the pentaacetate of glucose doesn't react with hydroxyl amine. We know that glucose has an aldehyde group. But in spite of having an aldehyde group, the pentaacetate of glucose doesn't react with hydroxyl amine. So all these three reactions which we have mentioned just now, they indicate the absence of free CHO group. Means CHO group is there, but this CHO group is not free. Now, one more point I would like to discuss here, students. Glucose is, fine. glucose is found to exist in two different crystalline forms, which are named as alpha and beta form. So, how these alpha and beta form differ, I'll discuss. 
So alpha form of glucose is having melting point 419 Kelvin. Children, just keep this point in your mind that alpha form of glucose has melting point 419 Kelvin. Then we will see how it is obtained. Alpha form of the glucose is obtained by crystallization from concentrated solution of glucose. How it is obtained? It is obtained by crystallization from concentrated solution of glucose at 303 Kelvin. Melting point of alpha form of glucose was 419 Kelvin. Then we will see, we will compare the beta form. Beta form of the glucose has melting point a little bit higher, 423 Kelvin. And how it is obtained? It is obtained by the crystallization from hot and saturated aqua solution at 371 Kelvin. So we have taken here hot and aqua solution at 371 Kelvin and in case of alpha glucose we have taken we have done crystallization from concentrated solution of glucose at 303 Kelvin. So it means that glucose is found to exist in two forms. What are these two forms? These two forms are alpha and beta forms. And I told you how they differ from each other. So this behavior could not be explained by the open chain structure for glucose. And so what it was proposed, so it was proposed that one of the OH group, because we have seen that in spite of having a LDID group, the glucose was not giving the specific reactions which an LDID group gives. So now it was proposed that one of the OH group may add to the CHO group and forms a cyclic hemiacetal structure. So it, it indicates that the CHO group is not present in free state. So now it was found that glucose forms a six-membered ring in which OH at C5 is involved in the ring formation. Picture of glucose, I'll write in this way. This is the aldehyde group. First carbon atom. This is the first carbon atom. Then this is second carbon atom. So carbon atom I'm not writing here. It is not written here, but this is the second carbon atom. Then third carbon atom is having the reverse configuration H, OH. This is the third carbon atom. Then fourth and fifth carbon atoms, they have the same arrangement. So H, OH. This is the fourth carbon atom. And fifth carbon atom also has the same arrangement. So this is the fifth carbon atom. And this is the 6 carbon atom, CH2OH. So I'm writing here 6. So children, what was proposed that? OH group of the 5th carbon atom forms an internal hemiacetal with the CHO group. So how this uh, internal hemiacetal formation will take place, I would like to uh, explain you with the, help, with the help of a trick. Children, you know that. I'm talking about the OH group present on the fifth carbon atom. As OH in OH group, as oxygen atom is more electronegative, it will get a negative charge. And hydrogen atom is more electropositive, or you can say it is less electronegative, it will get a positive charge. Now I'm talking about the first carbon atom. First carbon atom, the same thing will happen. Aldehyde group, carbon having the being the less electronegative will acquire a positive charge and oxygen being more electronegative will acquire a negative charge. So now how this bonding will take place will become easy for you to understand. This positively charged hydrogen atom will attach with the negative charge oxygen atom. And this negative charge oxygen atom will attach itself with the positively charged carbon atom. So I'm showing here like this. So now easily you can write this structure. So children, I'll write this structure here. So you can see here that H is this H. You can see here this H is attached 
getting attached on the oxygen atom so it will convert into OH. So I am writing a structure here C and in this structure I have written OH on the right hand side. In this structure I have written OH on the right hand side. So I will write here to get some more space. C O H and this side we will have H and rest of the thing second carbon atom will remain as it is so I am writing as it is third carbon atom will also remain as it is so I am writing here H O H then fourth carbon atom as it is H O H then fifth carbon atom we have seen that this internal hemiacetal will take place. So what will happen? This first carbon atom we have seen. Just now we have seen that this oxygen get attaches itself to the carbon atom. So this is the carbon atom. And oxygen. So this is the arrangement at fifth carbon atom. And 6 carbon atom will remain as it is CH2OH. So I hope this point is clear to you children. So now similarly one more possibility is there. So this possibility I am going to write here on this side. See children, the, this structure will be exactly same only this I am making a star here on the first carbon atom. So the arrangement on the first carbon atom, arrangement of H and OH will be different here and rest of the things will remain exactly same. So I am writing here C. OH in this structure I have written on the right hand side here. This OH I will write on the left hand side. C OH H. The rest of the things will remain exactly as it is. So I am writing here H OH OH H Then again I am writing here H OH Then fifth carbon atom we already discussed that it was involved in the formation of an internal hemiacetal then CH2OH. So you can see that in this structure, the, this is the structure, this is structure represents the open chain structure of glucose. And here these two structures, you can see they differ only in the arrangement of hydrogen and OH on the first carbon atom. So, and rest of the arrangement is exactly same. So, this is structure first is called as alpha D plus glucose. So, I am writing here this is called as alpha D plus glucose. And this is the open chain structure. So, here I will write this is the open chain structure. And the last structure, structure third, is called as beta D plus glucose. So now children, you can see that it should be clear to you. We can see here from these two structures in case of alpha D plus glucose and beta D plus glucose as the aldehyde group is not free. That's why we can understand why it is not showing some of the reactions which we have mentioned in the beginning of this session. So now this explains the absence of CHO group and also existence of glucose in two forms which we have seen. Glucose exists in two forms as shown below. So we have seen the existence of glucose in two forms.
So these two cyclic forms exist in equilibrium with open chain structure. Just now we have seen that glucose consists of this is the open chain structure and open chain structure exist in equilibrium with these two cyclic forms. So children, I hope these points are clear to you. After that, this one more point we have seen children, the two cyclic hemiacetyl forms of uh, glucose, the two cyclic hemiacetyl forms of glucose differ only in configuration of hydroxyl group at C1. I'll show you this point here, these two forms, how they differ. They differ only in the configuration of H and OH on the first carbon atom. Here we can see OH is present on the right hand side, here H is present on the left hand side. But in this case we can see that OH is present on the left hand side and H is present on the right hand side. So as these two hemiacetyl forms of uh, glucose differ only in the configuration of hydroxyl group at C1, so this first carbon atom is called as anomeric carbon atom and uh, this anomeric carbon atom actually it was aldehyde before cyclization. So remember this point. So the first carbon atom is called as anomeric carbon atom which differ only in the a configuration of hydroxyl group at first carbon atom and actually this anomeric carbon atom was an aldehyde carbon atom before cyclization. So such isomers that is alpha and beta form they are called as anomers. So children anomers I hope you understand the anomers is an important topic from your board exam point of view. In CBSE exam a number of times it has been asked what is anomer, what are anomeric carbon atoms. Now I would like to discuss one another important point. The six member cyclic structure of glucose is called pyranose structure. I'm talking about the six member cyclic structure which was formed alpha and beta structures we have seen. So the six member cyclic structure of glucose is called pyranose structure. It may be alpha uh, structure or it may be beta structure. Why it is called as pyranose structure? Because of its analogy with pyran, its resemblance with pyran. So we will discuss what is we will see what is pyran right now. So children pyran is a cyclic organic compound with one oxygen atom and five carbon atoms in the ring. So we will discuss the structure of pyran right now. So uh, this is the structure of pyron, pyran as I told you that it consists of a cyclic structure with one oxygen atom and five carbon atoms in the ring. So I am writing here children this is pyran. So the cyclic structure of glucose they are called as pyranose structure because these structures they resemble with this compound pyran. How? We, we are going to discuss just now. So the cyclic structure of glucose is more correctly represented by Havert structure which I am going to show you here. So first I am writing, I have written you, I have shown you what is pyran. After that as I told you the cyclic structures are written more correctly by the Havert structure. So how to write this Havert structure children? Uh, I'll write the two structures side by side. First I'll write the cyclic structure of alpha D glucose. Alpha D, D glucose just now we have seen this was the structure of alpha D glucose. So what I will do first I will write here alpha D glucose structure. So you have seen that the structure of alpha D glucose was I am writing here C X O H. That was the first carbon atom which has become anomeric carbon atom. And previously we have seen that it was an aldehyde carbon atom. After that, what will come here? The second carbon atom, we already know that second carbon atom has H, OH here. Then third carbon atom has the reverse configuration H, OH. Then we have fourth carbon atom H, OH here. And fifth carbon atom, we know that it was involved in the formation of an internal hemiacetal.
in the end we have CH2OH. So now what I said these cyclic structures are best represented by Havert structure. So this is the alpha, this is the structure for alpha D plus glucose. So let me write here, this is alpha D plus glucose. So I'll write the pyranose structure for glucose and I'll tell you a very simple trick how to write the pyranose structure of glucose. So for writing the pyranose structure of glucose, children, what I will do, I will draw a ha uh, hexagon with oxygen atom at the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to draw one hexagon here and in this hexagon, the oxygen atom is written on the upper right hand corner. This is a very simple trick. You will never forget children. So I have drawn a hexagon with oxygen atom at the upper right hand corner and the terminal CH2OH group is always placed above the plane of the hexagonal ring. So this, this terminal CH2OH group I am talking about, it is always written above the plane of the hexagonal ring. This I am talking about the D series which I have discussed in my previous video about the D and L series. Then, children, all the groups which are present on the left-hand side, they will be placed. All the groups which are present on the left-hand side, they will be placed above the plane of the ring. They will be placed above the plane of the ring and all the groups which are present on the right-hand side in this uh, cyclic structure, they will be placed below the ring. So as I told you, first I have drawn an hexagon, I have drawn a hexagon. In this hexagon, on the upper right hand corner, I have written oxygen. Then I told you one more point, the terminal CH2OH group is always placed above the plane of the hexagonal ring. So I am writing here the terminal hexagonal. Uh, so I am writing here the terminal CH2OH group I have written here CH2OH H. Now next thing is that all the groups which are present on the left hand side in the cyclic structure will be right above the plane in the case of Havert structure. So what will happen here? This is the second count. Uh, here I am writing H. This is structure just see children. H will come here above the plane and OH will be below the plane. So children, this is the first carbon atom. So you can see here the first carbon atom. This is the first carbon atom here. This is the second carbon atom, third carbon atom, fourth carbon atom, fifth carbon atom and this is the sixth carbon atom. So first carbon atom we have seen that this H was present on the left hand side. In case of closed structure, cyclic structure, so it is present above the uh, plane of the ring. Then similarly, the second carbon atom as H is present on the left hand side in the cyclic structure, so it will be placed above the plane of the ring. So second carbon atom is here children. So here what will be written? H will be written here. H then OH. Then, so this was the second carbon atom. Now I'm coming to the third carbon atom. Third carbon atom, you can see OH is present on the left hand side. So third carbon atom, OH will be here about the plane followed by H. So here I'm writing this is the third carbon atom. Then what is the fourth carbon atom? Fourth carbon atom, you know that H is present on the left hand side. So H will be written above the ring H O H. So this is the fourth carbon atom and we know that fifth carbon atom which is involved in the anomeric, um, uh, this is the, the fifth carbon atom which is the involved in the formation of the internal hemiacetal and this is the sixth carbon atom. So I hope this is structure is clear to you. This is the structure of alpha D plus. A glucose and this is structure is called as alpha D plus glucopyranose structure. So I'm writing here this is alpha D plus
ग्लूकोपायरानोज स्ट्रक्चर सो सिमिलरली आई विल राइट द स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द बीटा डी प्लस ग्लूकोपायरानोज स्ट्रक्चर सो फॉर राइटिंग दिस स्ट्रक्चर चिल्ड्रन अगेन आई विल राइट द फर्स्ट आई विल राइट द साइक्लिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ बीटा डी प्लस ग्लूकोज सो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू रिमाइंड यू दैट इन एल्फा डी प्लस ग्लूकोज यू हैव सीन दैट एच वॉज प्रेजेंट ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द फर्स्ट कार्बन एटम आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द एनोमेरिक कार्बन एटम H was present on the left hand side and OH was present on the right hand side. But in beta D plus glucose, this thing will be reversed. So I am writing here. First, I am going to write the cyclic structure of beta D plus glucose. So C, this is the first carbon atom, and OH in this structure will be present on the left hand side. H will be on the right hand side. and rest of the things as we know will be exactly same without any change as in case of alpha d plus glucose so what will come here second carbon atom we have h and oh then third carbon atom we have a reverse situation h oh fourth carbon atom we have h and oh and fifth carbon atom as we know that here we will find the formation of a internal hemi acetal so this is the fifth carbon atom sixth carbon atom will remain as it is now children so this is the structure of beta d plus glucose this is beta d plus glucose now i will write its habert structure or pyranose structure children this structure is called as pyranose because of its analogy because of its resemblance with pyran i have discussed just now and one more point i want to mention here as these structures were suggested by habert so they are also known as habert structures so now as i told you i will draw a hexagonal structure and oh will be there on the above right hand corner then this last ch2oh group will always be present this last ch2oh group will always be present above the plane so i am writing here this is the ch2oh h so now i will write the structures one by one this is the first carbon atom so children you can see here on the first carbon atom oh is present on the left hand side so oh will be written above the plane so oh h now look at the second carbon atom so this was the first carbon atom this is the second here third fourth fifth sixth the second carbon atom has h oh because h is present on the left hand side then third carbon atom oh will be above the plane h will be below the plane so this is the first carbon atom this is second carbon atom this is third carbon atom now i'm coming to the fourth carbon atom fourth carbon atom you can see h will be above the plane so h oh what about fifth this is the fifth carbon atom which is involved in the formation of internal hemiacetal and this is the sixth carbon atom so what is the name of this structure this is called as beta d plus glucose or beta d uh, plus glucopyranose so i am writing the name here beta d plus glucopyranose and this is the structure is simply the beta d plus glucose this is the cyclic structure so children i hope that all these structures you have written correctly so finally in the end i will write uh, like to write these two structures alpha d plus uh glucopyranose structure and beta d plus glucopyranose structure so and you also try to draw along with me so i am writing here o first I, i have drawn a hexagon then i have written oxygen on the upper right hand side then this is the first carbon atom children in 
This structure H will be here above the plane OH. Then second carbon atom H and OH. This I told you how to write these structures. Then third carbon atom what we will have OH here above the plane and H is below the plane. This is the third carbon atom. Then I am coming to the fourth carbon atom. Fourth carbon atom is H and OH. And sixth carbon atom, this is the fifth carbon atom. On fifth carbon atom, we will have CH2OH. Always above the plane, that will be exactly the same. So this is the, we have written third carbon atom. This is the fourth carbon atom. And this carbon atom, which I have written here, this will be the fifth carbon atom. CH2OH, H below the plane and this is the 6 carbon atom. So children, this is alpha D plus glucopyranose. I hope uh, you have understood it nicely. Uh, you just listen this video uh, with full concentration. After that, you listen it once again and uh, draw all these structures and follow the instructions which I told you. Then it will become very easy for you to draw these structures. You will never forget these structures. So this is alpha D plus glucopyranose. Alpha D plus glucopyranose. Similarly, now I would like to write the structure for beta D plus glucopyranose children, the structure will be exactly same. There will be only difference in the first carbon atom which is called as anomeric carbon atom. So again, I am drawing one hexagon with oxygen on the right hand corner. This is the first carbon atom, anomeric carbon atom I am writing here. So first carbon atom, what will be the difference in case of beta D plus glucopyranose? OH will be above the plane and H will be below the plane. And rest of the structure will be exactly same. H, OH. This is the second carbon atom. This is the third carbon atom. What you will have? Exactly same. OH and H. Then fourth carbon atom will be exactly same. H and OH. Then fifth carbon atom will have CH2OH above the plane. H below the plane. So this is the fifth carbon atom and this is the sixth carbon atom. So this is called as alpha D plus this was alpha D and this is called as beta D. So this is called as beta D plus glucopyranose. So children, I hope that you understood nicely how to write Habert structure or pyranose structure from the cyclic structures. So you have to make enough practice and just follow the tricks so things will become very easy for you. So children, in the end, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. And I want to remind you to subscribe the channel for getting information about very important uploads. Press the like button if you like this video and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to watch the next part of this video, Biomolecules Part 4. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.